this. This is our, one of our rhinos. Mm -hmm. Out of Christian's rehabilitation back to um, Kenya um, has today, here we are 40 years later, where we've got two national parks, mm -hmm. which the George Adamson Trust run, which is the mm -hmm. trust we formed in George's memory. Uh, the field director is a guy called Tony Fitzjohn, mm -hmm. who um, was George's assistant for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And he runs the trust. Um, Can you just go, just trace back to George? So this is George Adamson, Adamson who yes. was the husband of Joy Adamson. Joy Adamson, yes. And together they raised Elsa. Elsa Lion, which was, was kind of like this very world famous. She was the first mega lions, lion lioness star, star yes. Uh, uh, and a film, you know. The film of Born, Born Free. Free the book, the film. Um, jo jo uh, George was a game warden mm. in Kenya. Mm. And um, um, he had shot a lioness who'd been killing domestic mm. stock. Right. And that was a game warden's job. Right. And um, when they shot her, they suddenly realised that, oh my God, she was lactating, that there were cubs around. Mm. And um, so they took the cubs, he mm. collected the cubs, took them back to Joy, mm. and she hand-reared them. Right. And then the game department said, well, you can't be keeping these. And they sold two to Rotterdam Zoo, mm. but they let her keep let her keep Elsa I see. and so Elsa was um, the first lioness to be rehabilitated and George this was in the 60s this was back in the 50s oh, okay. 1955 right, right, years right. way back right. and um, um, Elsa um, attracted a lot of attention worldwide because mm. of the book Born Free and then because of the film yeah. which in which starred Virginia McKenna as Joy and built her husband, Bill Travers, as George. Right, okay. And um, so um, it was to George that we gave Christian. Yeah. Because by the time he was a year old, he was really, he was still perfectly amenable and no problem. He'd never bitten anybody. Mm. He'd never bitten your dad or something when he came right. to see us, you know. Did, right. He hadn't done that. Right. But he was getting too big. He was 175 right. pounds. Yeah. And if he'd leant against the window of the shop, maybe he would have hurt himself or right. somebody else. Right. And so we were talk thinking about taking him to Longleat, mm. which you know obviously was working very well then, which was at um, the Marquis of Bath's estate yes. in down Wiltshire. Right. And that had set, been set up by him and Jimmy Chipfield, ex right. of Chipfield Circuses. And um, so we thought that that'd be fine for Christian. Yes. And then we had this introduction to George Adamson, who thought, well, look, it's a challenge because, you know, Elsa was born in Kenya. She knew the smells of Kenya. She knew what a zebra looked like. Mm. Whereas Christian, grown up in the King's Road, right. uh, he only knew what a Mercedes convertible looked like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, again, going back to that lifestyle, um, so you would be taking Christian in the back of a... Mercedes, yeah, uh, convertible, yeah. Yeah. rolling down the King's, King's Road, Road the yeah. Swing King's Road, and no problem. Hanging out with, with the going, uh, yeah, going, yeah. No, he was no problem at all. Mm. But he was getting too big, so right. we knew that. Uh, and we always knew when the moment we bought him that he was not, never going to be with us forever. Mm. We had mm. to find something. Yeah. And um, so th the challenge to take him back to Kenya mm. was involved, you know, some pretty major decisions because, you know, he might make it. He was a fifth generation domesticated mm. lion mm. or zoo bred lion. Mm. And uh, George said, oh, look, he'll accept the challenge. Mm. And he said, but listen, I just don't know. Mm. I just honestly, because no one knows. It never mm. been done before. Mm. And um, so um, we decided, look, we were confident. I mean, he was very healthy. Um, we were conceitedly convinced he was very intelligent, um, though of course it turned out he, he, he was, even in lion terms as well. And um, so we took him to George. It took um, two years, two and a half years to rehabilitate him, mm. because you know, they have to learn, they have to learn how to hunt. Um, to rehabilitate a leopard, you just open the cage and away right. it goes. It can kill the first thing it sees. Right. Uh, but a lion can't. It become a bit too soft then, essentially, like a bit, well, a bit too pampered. And, the, the, okay. Certainly, he'd been pampered, but they have to be taught how right. to kill. Right. And it's not it's not a solitary right. process. Right, right. It's a team effort. Right. Okay. And um, 
you know, there's, there's this um, preconception that, you know, the actual, the lion is very lazy because mm. the lionesses do all the killing. Right. But it's a system that works because the lioness is 250 pounds, the lion is 500. Right. He can't run as fast as them. Right. So off the lionesses go and they work in conjunction. You know, it's a team effort. So they're, they're, mm. they're, they're uh, kind of... Um, hidden from each other and you right. seem to know where they are right. and it's kind of ambush and right. they will bring down a buffalo which right. is 2,000 kilos so mm. they don't they can get it because they're fast enough but they may not have the strength so the lion comes in all right so he actually, he actually does do something yeah that he comes in at the end right. and he will break the neck or suffocate it right and then he eats first then the lionesses eat, and then the cubs. Right, right. So if it's a big kill, mm. there's plenty for everybody. Mm. But if it's a lean time, he is always going to be okay. Then the lionesses. But if there's if there's not enough left for the cubs, that's it. Wow. They they go. And so um, only fifty percent of um, lion cubs survive until they're two years old. Oh, okay. It's it may be king of the jungle, but they have right. a tough tough time, right. either through drought or lack of game right. uh, and um, or they may be taken by a hyena or a leopard or they can even be trampled by elephants El elephants right. will kill lion cubs right right and um, so they have a tough time mm. so when we took Christian out to give him to George although he was only a year old because he'd never missed a meal he was the size of a one-year-old right. of a two-year-old right. and George said oh wow you know this is what so did you feed him by the way a lot yeah. What, what, what? Well, he had four meals a day, right. two liquid and two solids, right. and that was a diet that was put together by Harrods, and um, the liquid meals were um, um, things like complan and uh, raw eggs, mm. all mixed up in milk, obviously, right. and then the, the solid meal was meat with um, bone meal scattered on it, right. and um, there was quite a lot of additives, there were calciums, there was... Um, DCP two forty, I remember whatever that was. There was um, there were a lot of additives. To you, you had a local butcher supply. Local butcher, right. yeah, who uh, gave us meat that uh, right. passed its sell by date, right, which right. of course wouldn't mar worry a lion. Right. And also he would give us the marrow bones, right. and it's like you know us having a nosobuco, you know, right, fantastic. Right. You know he loved he loved that. Right. You know, and um, that was um. No, he he was well he was well fed. I mean, that must have been quite. Uh, I mean, just just the expense of. of it was costing. Well, well, he yeah. cost two hundred and fifty guineas, which is about four thousand quid today. Right. And he was um, thirty pounds a week to feed, which is a couple hundred quid a week now. Yeah. It was an expensive yeah. exercise. Full time. And education. vet bills, because um, he had a vet in London who right. um, kept an eye on him. Right. Manicure as he, well. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> he did have his hair blown drying for Blue Peter, uh, really? which was done at Gary Craze's <laughs> shop over the road. He used to do. And Gary Craze. Was he he the, uh, he had a shop called. Um, oh God, what was Gary's shop called? But he did all the Stones hair and Ericsson. He did oh, and okay. Bowie's hair. He did all the yeah. pop star hair. Did Did any of these, uh, you know, rock stars meet? Well, Mick Jagger did. Star? Mick did. Right. And, 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 and Ronnie would because he yeah. was just round in. Because they've got, they've got, they all had their manes as well. Yeah, I know, I mean, exactly. Hair was a big thing. In, in and it was interesting days. that Ronnie Wood, who's become a patron of Tusk, which is a very good charity, <coughs> um, and um, Ronnie um, has been very supportive of um, conservation projects. Right. And it's rather, you know, and of course they always laugh, you know. And, and, um, I was somewhere um, at lunch um, last year and um, uh, Mick. Jagger was there, mm -hmm. and someone said, "Oh, you know John and Christian." He said, "Oh God, I know Christian. I knew Christian. You know, oh, they right. did because yeah. it was also very free. You know, people. These people were just wandering around the streets. It was so part of the landscape. There was no bodyguards and or right. security then. You know, the right. difficulty, difficulty those people have moving around now. Right. Yeah. And um, it was much yeah. more relaxed. And more probably more. Uh, Todd's it was called. Oh, well, right. that was the hit. But Gary right. Craze, and it was yes. called Todd's. And it was just tucked away beside Granny takes a trip over there on the King's right. Road, mm. and um, everyone was just hanging out. Then there was no kind of hierarchy, you know. Not really. Like said, no. Equal. Because the gigs were were places which were very accessible too. They were smaller. Right. Um, at, the, you know, at the Troubadour, the King's Head, and um, uh, you know we all. Did you ever take uh, Christian to any gigs? No. Or? 
Did he no. hear any music no. or you no. know, that would have been... No, no, that was not have worked. At a party or No, something. that would not have worked. Right. And the only times he ever went to parties, they were kind of very small, right, right. private things right, that, right. Um, uh, yeah. w where we knew everybody. Right. And I'd just be interested, did, did, did he enjoy music at all? Or did well, I did, he didn't really hear it. I mean, it yeah. must have been around, but yeah. I don't think... Because I know some animals can respond to that. I'm just wondering whether, whether there was something specific that kind of relaxed him or calmed him down or I don't know whatever that you might have no done. there wasn't no we didn't we yeah. didn't actually hadn't thought of music I mean we yeah. had music all around us yeah. but with him no there, but there was always someone with him interacting right. with him right um, you could leave him alone then essentially you didn't leave him alone no. right because then uh, as you said the lion can't he doesn't like that, but they even do if, even for five minutes. Oh yes, but I mean they don't. I mean they can sleep fifteen hours a day. Oh, ah, okay. So um, you can leave him go out for your day. And yeah. Yes. No. Right. Yes. And, and he'd and, be very and, happy. And nothing, you know. Would... Well, he had his own territory at all, which was at the lower floor of the shop there, oh. and it had terrible old things in it, rolled up mattresses he used to drag around and tear right. up and things. Right, but, right. But um, no, but if he was in the flat, he, w he w was was not destructive at yes, all. Yes. The only thing would be an accident where he'd knock something over, you mm, know, because mm, of his size. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, John, we're, we're kind of going. I know, all over. You're around. getting the whole yes, spiel. Yes, um, and and uh, I definitely want to ask you about. I mean, obviously, the 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 you know the rehabilitation of of. Mm. Of Christian, and then kind of reintroduction from Wild, and then you meeting him mm. after two years. Was that um, the first? It was one year after. One year. Yeah. I mean, that's history and mm. well documented, mm. and beautiful in the story and the. the video well, that YouTube clip has beautiful. been the last audit we had was about two years ago, and that mm. that sum total of all the, mm. the the different clips you see it on was a hundred million. Yes. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yes. But um, for me now, I do quite a lot of lecturing at schools yes. and, and things, and uh, it's used as a teaching tool because yes. it, it focuses people to say, oh my God, this is an amazing thing to see. Yes. And from that, you can lead on to mm. threats to the environment and how we should mm. look after all after our world. You know, right, it's, a, it's right. a useful teaching it's, it's, tool. It's, it's a very, um, very profound subject, isn't it? The right relationship between man and animal, man and the environment. I mean, as well as the story yeah you know, right, well the back story, story of course yes. is is um unique but the that footage just shows that um you know you can have a relationship with mm. an animal mm. and in this case an exotic animal if mm. you like to use that term mm. and also what um uh, when when i show it to um young kids mm. they all cheer and shout say it's fabulous but they see people of our age kind of tearing up and that's mm. because we've all experienced separation and that's why at airports people are always crying because you know dad i haven't seen you mum i haven't seen you for a year or something mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. reunions are very emotional mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and so in this case when you've got the reunion between a human being and a lion mm -hmm. you know people mm -hmm. it, it 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 reminds you of that time mm -hmm. when you hadn't seen right. your mum or your dad for a year Absolutely. and or, um or spouse or loved what, one, any loved, loved one, one yeah loved one. but and, and has has that I mean, about the film itself, is, is it, I mean, obviously, it was the time period, there's a kind of a whole backstory to it, which is extremely exotic and bizarre, and, you know, the fact that you had a lion growing from the King's Road, and mm. that, that, that kind of thing with it, but has there been anything like this since? I mean, any other... There are people sensations doing, and films that have kind of well. You know, there are people who you know, reunions um, there have been reunions <coughs> with with people with other lions. Yes, and there are people working with lions today. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, there's a fantastic guy called um, Gareth Pat uh, Keith. Um, what's he called? Um, um, the guy in South Africa, I know him really well, so I'm sorry I can't remember his name, I'll remember it in a moment. Mm. And he works with white lions, and he's mm. fantastic, he mm. really is. And he, he saves them from zoos and right. circuses. What's a white lion? That is, it's, it's not a, um, um, an albino, mm. it's a genetic um, 
freak. It happens only in um, Timbavati in South Africa, which is, mm. which is north of um, Kruger National Park, mm. where every now and again they throw up a white lion, mm. and uh, where the others are called tawny, of course. And, um, but they're not an albino. They still have amber eyes. Right, right. Tawny is, is the yeah. name? Normal lion. Right. Yeah, right. The tawny. Right. You know, so you can have a tawny, African, Asian? Yeah, Asian. They're all tawny. Tawny, okay. But you have, what is tawny? Uh, it's just the colour. Yeah. That brown colour. Oh, okay. That brownish yellow okay. colour. It's okay. torn. Tawny. Tawn. tawn. Right. That's a colour. Right. And um, these white lions are fantastic. But and, um, unfortunately, they've become uh, ex so valuable because mm. canned hunters would like to shoot a white lion. Right. Oh, you know, it's, it's really... Um, no, so there are people doing work with mm. lions, mm. but there, there are more people and there's more publicity to people saving rhinos and, li and uh, right, elephants right. at the moment. Right, right. Because the ivory and the, the rhino. But in terms of the relationship that was documented, the film, it really, it's, it's quite a, 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 a sensational and massive, um, almost quite unique. It's, well, it is unique because, as I said, no one's ever taken one from Europe back mm. and rehabilitated yeah. it. Um, there are charities like the Born Free Foundation who are taking lions back to Africa. They've right. saved from hideous zoos and nightclubs, right. okay. horrible places. Right. But those lions, um, they've been ruined. There's right. no way you could rehabilitate them. Right. So basically they're living in a kind of long lead situation right. 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 in various places in, right. in Africa, in South right. Africa. Um, and they're just living their lives out there in comfort. Mm. Yeah. But they'd never be rehabilitated right, right, right. because also there's no one really around who can rehabilitate right, them. Right, right. There's not the skills. George is dead. Right. Tony Fitzjohn, who can do it, mm. of course, um, is focusing on Mukamazi, which is our um, uh, national park in Tanzania. Okay. And the priority there was, which has been defined by Tanapa, which is the wildlife department there, is that we have to concentrate on the animals that are extinct there yeah, yeah. and or we're we're no longer in that area and that is um, the black rhino yeah. and the um, African hunting dog right, right. and so we breed and and collect uh, black rhinos we've got um, 23 there now mm -hmm. um, not a huge number considering what were there were in 1970 there were 7,000 black rhino in right, Tanzania right, 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 right. today there are a couple of hundred so this is this is where your focus is right now. Your this your is my focus, focus with the George world. Adamson Wildlife Preservation Trust, right? And um, it's all because of Christian bought on a whim, you know, in London all those mm. years ago. Today we have two national parks, one in Kenya and one in Tanzania, right. which would not exist if Christian had not gone back there, mm. and. In Tanzania, we've got um, 11 schools built mm. around the uh, perimeter of the national park, mm. all of which um, those students are being uh, being educated. Mm. And uh, you know, this is the only way the game is going to survive, of mm. course, is by the edu education. Mm. And um, just saying to say these kids in uh, in Tanzania that um, you know. You you see all this wildlife. You don't you, you know you, you don't um, necessarily um, um, appreciate it mm. because um, people who grow up in America, Australia, Europe don't see it, and so they will come and see it. You you treat it as every day. Yeah. It's special. Yeah, take and it so for granted. You yeah. take it for granted, and so you have to appreciate. This is the money in the bank mm. for you. And um, at uh, Mukamazi, where we are in Tanzania, we're, uh, um, we're going to start, it's going to become, uh, take tourists in there. Mm -hmm. And so we say to these, these kids, look, you know, we're not trying to turn you into waiters or tour guides or drivers. You know, mm -hmm. you do what you want. Mm -hmm. But when these people come, mm -hmm. they're going to buy your mother's vegetables, they're mm -hmm. going to buy your father's mm -hmm. cat meat mm -hmm. from his cattle, mm -hmm. and your parents are going to have enough money to send you on to secondary school, mm. to university, mm. Mm. educate you, and mm. that is what they want, of course. Mm. So it's a good, it, you know, that is the, the ongoing kind of aim, is to, you know, just spread the word that, you know, you don't tell the Somali poacher where the rhino is and get, right. get 200 bob, because kind of the 200 bob is a one-off. Yeah. You're, if that rhino is alive, 
there's going to be 200 bob every month for your father. Right, yeah, looking at a sustainable life in the future. Absolutely, a sustainable income, because where we are, and one has to be realistic, the only reason that the Tanzanian government agreed to us having this area, it's 1,500 square miles, mm -hmm. is because there's no diamonds, there's no uranium, there's mm -hmm. no, you know, yeah. there's no gold, right. you know, there's nothing else there, there's right, only right. the game. Right, right. If they had any of those minerals, yeah. we wouldn't have it, and the Chinese mm -hmm. would be in there. So uh, I'm just going, uh, just just going back. I mean, as you said, if you didn't have Christian and you didn't kind of have this incredible story and back backstory behind it, the, these these reserves wouldn't exist. I mean, I presume you had profound change in your or the course of your life and trajectory of your life changed as a result of Christian. And it did somehow, as you said, what why I mean. Why, why are these parks in existence because of Christian? What, what's, is that because of your journey and your passion to expand? It's a combination of many people's mm. passion, of which I've been privileged to become part of and agree with. Mm. So it was a great eye-opener to me, you know, coming, grow, growing up in Western New South Wales, mm. coming to London, having a fabulous time, going to Africa and having my first introduction to Africa, which mm. is... Um, something that you know through the light through, through the line he yeah. introduced and, and me George to and meeting George Adamson who was a kind of extraordinary guru and right. amazing as I'm sure you've met people who just think this yeah. is real wisdom this right. is real right. knowledge this is right. real modesty right. and and yet prepared to share it mm -hmm. and um, you know he was an extraordinary man who's yeah. his, his influence and mm -hmm. goes on and on and on so how can people support and um, you know, get involved with uh, if, if they feel moved and touched or inspired by by your story um, and, and, and the opportunity to connect and support lions and or all wildlife. wildlife. So yes. yeah, please just let well, us know how. Well, obviously, do that. although we're um, our initial focus for the George Adamson Trust was the, was lions. Mm. Um, you can't just be concerned with one species. Mm. And so now we're focused on, on, on rhinos, on wild dogs, and uh, because of the, the requirements of the Tanzanian government. Mm. But if anyone just go on to georgeadamson.org, they will yeah. see what we do, what it encompasses. Right. And um, um, we have um, a, um, an American um, branch. We yeah. have an English one, of course, Keen right. in Tanzania and Germany, <coughs> and Dutch, a very good Dutch one. Right. And it's all people just donating, um, whether it's ten dollars or right, whatever, right, right. and those sums add up, right. because um, we, we we've got some very generous um, big donors. I mean, um, Sir Anthony Lord Anthony Lord Bamford. Now Anthony Bamford, his JCB is one of our big mm. supporters, mm. and they help us with providing a JCB backhoe or a digger mm. or a fast mm. track or something. Mm. Suzuki Holland are very generous. Um, but the, their money, their donations, in a sense, is ring fenced mm. uh, for specific things. W w what we need is really kind of um, funds which go to pay the rather dull things like fuel, mm. um, wages, in a way, you know, right. those things. Right, right. Uh, uh, and we we have to do that. And is, I, is, I hope you take that with you, please. Yes, yeah. Great. So, so uh, there's the, is there an educational facility to the website or people can learn more about or, or, or there's an education program yeah. in schools if you go into the website you'll see the schools right. and you'll see the schools that we support and um, the um, um, opportunities, opportunities yes and um, I mean these we bring kids into the um, um, let's just see if I can find some of the children. You're going to have some tourist things as well. With tourism is going to come. But see, we bring these kids in. Mm. And we bring them in a bus, which was donated by Chester Zoo. Mm. Um, and, they come, and they come and look at their own. And they don't know. You know, some of these kids have never seen, seen the wildlife themselves. Mm. Mm. The other aspect of the King James is, is the invitation and the reminder and the um, encouragement to live regally. Mm -hmm. And the lions, kind of, in our view, is, is another one of those, kind of a symbol of that, too. Well, he epitomizes and, it. It's, yeah, and mm -hmm. I, and I kind of like just, I'd, I'd really be interested to know what you feel living regally means. And maybe, you know, with, with the spirit of the lion and mm -hmm. your, your, you know, your mm -hmm. understanding and very, very deep connection with that, what, 
what that means for you um, as a human being, but also just in terms of how we uh, well, can be in the, in the world. I think regally, I mean, if, if you are the king, as the lion is of his pride, mm. he looks after them. Mm. And the he has a relationship with every member of mm. his pride mm. and his family. Mm. And he will fight to defend them. Mm. And it's very impressive when you see someone who is so powerful, mm. but is, can also be so gentle. Mm. And you can see the, the alpha male, this guy who will kill mm. to protect his family, playing with his cubs, mm. you know, these little cubs, it's, it, mm. you know, he's be very generous to mm. them. Mm. And, um, you know, when you are so powerful, you, you, you are in a position to be gentle and kind and protective. Mm. So I think, um, you know, to be, to be regal, mm. um, first of all, you have to be impressive, and the lion is mm. impressive, mm. and it's naturally impressive. Mm. It doesn't need gold, it doesn't need jewellery, it mm. doesn't need decoration, it mm. doesn't need the Bentleys and Ferraris. Mm. It's purely in his physical presence. Mm. And then when you see him overseeing his pride, looking after them, mm. Mm. defending them, mm. and loving them, mm. and that's what I think is regal.